All right, Toronto, we are back. And it's time for us to finish our GM mode commentary with your dynasty, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Three Stanley Cups in five years. Actually, three Stanley Cups in four years. Not too shabby for the blue and white. So it's time for general manager Superb Man to ride off into the sunset to choose a new team to try to win another Stanley Cup because my job here in Toronto is done. So boys, in this video, we're just going to quickly wrap up everything. Um, I want to do a live stream in the next couple of days to take the Toronto Maple Leafs from like year 5 up to year 10 if we can. But for YouTube, we're going to switch to another uh, to another GM mode in the next few days, alright? So let's just wrap this sucker up. We'll check out the awards and the individual stats. We'll just quickly sim through the NHL entry draft to take a look at the future for the blue and white. All right, we'll do all that good stuff. So here it is, the Stanley Cup and the champions of the world, the Toronto Maple Leafs. So we won it in 17-18, 19-20, 20-21, three in four years, and it only took us, well, I mean, I'm only five years into this. You don't have to count the first year, though. We were rebuilding in that year. My God, man. I got to say, now that I've won the three Stanley Cups, the Toronto Maple Leafs pretty much already built by the time you get here. Austin Matthews, William Nylander, Mitch Marner, Morgan Riley becomes an elite offensive defenseman, and uh, Harold Bluetooth, Frederick Anderson, man, an 88 overall elite goaltender. He's not growing anymore, but if he has a good season, he can grow to 89. The Leafs were clearly ready to go on this kind of run. Uh, let's go to player awards. I don't think I won too many player awards, though. Art Ross, you had uh, Paul Juja Harvey, probably playing with McDavid. Uh, Patrick Kane had a win in there. Jamie Ben with two. Alexander Ovechkin in year number one. Hart Memorial, man, Jesse had a great year. He won the Art Ross and the Hart. Uh, James Norris, Morgan Riley. Okay, so we didn't have any Toronto Maple Leafs win the heart. James Norris, Morgan Riley won in year number two. So that's what I'm talking about. Morgan Riley's great. Jesus, Lady Bing, Jesse Poole, Juju Harvey is coming through this year. Calder Memorial goes to T. Magali on the uh, Washington Capitals. Austin Matthews won the Calder in year number one. Con Smythe, hey, he did it again. Back to back years. Harold Blue, actually three years. Jesus. No, that's the Con Smythe. What's the Vesna? He won the Vesna as well. There you go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I got messed up there. The Conn Smythe is the playoff MVP. Every time we won the Stanley Cup, Harold Bluetooth, he came in there and was our best player. If you remember the first Stanley Cup win, he got injured in the Stanley Cup Finals. But because what he did in the first three rounds, he still ended up winning the Conn Smythe. And then years four and five, he was actually able to hoist the Stanley Cup after a victory. So good job there, Harold Bluetooth. Amazing. Maple Leaf legend. Uh, Vesna Trophy. Harold Bluetooth finally had the kind of regular season. He was already, he was always up there for nomination, but we, we never won the President's Trophy here in Toronto. Usually the President's Trophy garners a Vesna Trophy as well, but uh, Harold Bluetooth, there it is, man. Vesna Trophy in 2021. So he won the Stanley Cup, the Conn Smythe, and the Vesna all in one year. What a great year. Uh, William M. Jennings goes to Jake Allen from the St. Louis Blues. Do we have anyone in there? Yeah, Harold Blue, 2, 17, 18. Okay, so all the way down there. Bill Masterton, Hutton, did we have anyone in there? Matt Hunwick in year number one. Frank J. Selke, Patrice Bergeron with a hat trick over the last three years. Kopitar and Stahl didn't have any uh, defensive players. Ted Lindsay, Jesse Poole, Juju Harvey again. Morgan Riley won in year number two. And Maurice Richard, yeah, Connor McDavid and Jesse Poole, Juju Harvey on the same line, man. Connor McDavid, Tarasenko, Kane, Tarasenko, and Stamkos. So we didn't really have any individuals that took over over the last five years. We were just a great team. We had everything that we needed on this squad, and it uh, it proved itself with three Stanley Cups in four years. So what I want to do is I want to start the NHL entry draft. The reason being, we're not going to do any draft picks. Uh, I've already saved the game beforehand. So for the live stream, we can actually do this NHL entry draft and see what the future holds. Some options, hang on some entire draft but for right now I just want to take a look at what the roster looks like to show you guys how the future sets up for the Toronto Maple Leafs because you know what man you could win five Stanley Cups with this team our, our roster players in their prime are like mid-20s like Austin Matthews, Nylander, uh, uh, Mitch Marner. I know Harold Bluetooth is getting up there, but with three con Smites under his belt you might have to hold on to him. I know Patrick Spocek we're hoping for him to grow right but for a Leaf goaltender to win three Stanley Cups and three Conn Smites, that's, that's amazing. No Toronto uh, fan would want to see this guy go anywhere. And he's only 31 years of age. I mean, you got him for at least another 
two years of prime, three years of being really good, maybe even four or five years if he gets lucky and you play him, right? But he got him for at least another two years. Yeah, Harold Bluetooth. So I won't make any signings. We're just going to go through the team and take out uh, take a look at everyone. So Frederick Anderson, a 31-year-old, 89 overall goaltender. If you remember year number one, he came in as an 88. So he's just been staying around 88, 89. I think I even saw him drop to 87. Uh, but he's played fine at that. Patrick Spacek, our goaltender of the future, we traded away Nazem Kadri in a draft pick, I believe, for him. Uh, he's 79 overall with elite potential, 21 years of age. 10 years younger than Harold Bluetooth, so you have the change. When that change comes, I don't know. Maybe you hold on to him for another two, uh, is it two years? Yes, two years, yeah, because we just passed the draft. Patrick Spacek has another two years left on this contract. So you can sign uh, Harold Bluetooth for three years, play him for the next two, and then trade him as a 33-year-old goaltender. Unless Patrick Spacek gets an amazing jump. Uh, and then all these other guys are just our backup uh, goaltenders. All right, so let's take a look at our defensive core. Morgan Riley, 27 years of age. You see what I mean about this Toronto Maple Leaf squad? 27, sign him to a... Uh, next year is his deal. So 28, sign him to a seven-year uh, deal. He'll come out of that when he's 35. That's perfect, man. So you got Morgan Riley in his prime for like another six, seven years. That's fantastic. Connor Carrick would be a guy that you'd have to think about trading because he's got one year left at 4.5. Um, he's 89 overall, but this guy could easily drop. His, his potential is uh, exact top six, right? We've seen him drop down to an 87. His trade value is high right now, and I don't think you'd be able to afford him come next year. So... I think Connor Carrick, three Stanley Cups with the Leafs, it's time to move him off. Same thing with Jake Gardner. You might be able to use Jake for one more year, but as a 30-year-old, he's starting to get up there, and you don't want to have to sign him at 32 years of age. That wouldn't work out. So Jake Gardner's playing his last season. Either, either just played his last season or is playing one more season with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Same thing with Vili Poca. He's 27. I'd hold on to Vili Poca for one more year. You wouldn't want to have to re-sign him either. You'd want to you want to reset right there. Eric Jelena, uh, same thing with Connor Carrick. He'd be somebody that you would trade at the trade da uh, the draft right there. Uh, 30 years of age with only one year left on his deal. Dion Fagouf decided not to reti uh, not to retire. I'd bring him back for one more year as an injury player, boys. <laughs> we were, what, 7-1 in the playoffs with Dion Fagouf on the first line. Unbelievable. Uh, Barbario, Valiev, any uh, defensive players? Top six, medium potential, 21 years of age. Uh, yeah, we have a bunch of guys like that. There's Jockton Chaney. He was a year one draft pick. Jesus, he's taking forever. 76 uh, overall, 21 years of age. So we have some guys. There's the yeah, SE. Some top four potential right there. So you got some defensemen here in Toronto that could grow. But if you're looking for next year, I'd say you go with Morgan Riley, you hold on to Jake Gardner and Vili Polka, but you got to trade away Eric Jelena and uh, Connor Carrick and bring in some young defensemen that can also contribute to a winning season next year. That's how I see our defensive core. Let's go right wingers. Uh, William Nylander, see what I mean, 25 years of age, 10 plus years with this guy in your team still. Uh, Mitch Martiner, 10 plus years, and we got them signed long term with 6.5 million, so it's good. Kaspari Kapanen, one year left, he might be somebody that you want to trade, but then again, he's RFA next year, so you could always do a tender qualifying offer, trade him if you can't sign him. So uh, you know what, I'd actually hold on to Kaspari Kapanen. Uh, Daniel Sprong, got to give him a deal. Uh, Zach Hyman, Ty Ratty, Connor Brown, Pippinen, all these guys. Any potential players that we have? Oh, yeah, this Roussel guy. Everyone wanted him. AHL top six. He's an enforcer, right? Rob Roussel. And he's already listed as a fourth line forward. Holy crap. It'd be interesting to see this guy in the fourth line just to see how he plays. Uh, he'd get some ice time in the future for us. I know he would. Uh, Taylor Hall, 29 years of age. Uh, I don't think you would trade away Taylor Hall yet. You could hold on to him for a couple more years. Um, but when Nylander, Marner, and Matthews and those contracts come up, you definitely have to trade away Taylor Hall. JVR is somebody that I would want to trade away. He's helped us win three Stanley Cups. He's been a fantastic roster player for us here in Toronto. But he's 32 years of age with one year left on his deal. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to resign him at 33 years of age at 85 overall. So Jake Gardner, JVR, Connor Carrick, all in their last years, I would definitely trade them at the draft. Now, hang on one second here, boys. All right, that's a little bit better. Congested nose. It's cold around Christmas, boys. So, JVR we just talked about, right? Yeah, he's gone, though. Uh, Grunstrom back for the bottom six. Greg Belfort back for the bottom six. Timoshev and Sprong might be the replacements for JVR and another forward if we want. You might keep them on the third line. They might actually be good enough to be moved up to the top six. If that's the case... 
Then you have to look at uh, the center for Timoshev and Sprong, if it's Cody Eakin. Or if you leave Mitch Marner down there, maybe it's time for Taylor Hall to go out. I don't know, man. We got a lot of players here. Do you give a chance to uh, Timoshev and Sprong to grow? Because the last time we gave Sprong a contract, I think his, his numbers were way up there. Uh, all right, so, you know, ah, oh, damn it. Hang on one second again, boys. All right, that's a little bit better. Where the hell were we? Centers, right? Okay, so, Austin Matthews, my goodness. A three-time Stanley Cup winner as a captain of a team at 23 years of age. This guy's got seven years left before he turns 30. My goodness, man. Austin Matthews could have one of the greatest careers an NHL player ever had. Maybe not point totals-wise, but just championship wise you know the things that he accomplishes as a captain oh my god 23 years of age so that's exactly what i'm talking about before we uh i'll, I'll look at the centers here in a second let me just show you the all skaters again and sort by overall right <coughs> oh it's one of those mornings boys so we got uh, Morgan Riley. We got to sign him again next year, but 27 years of age. Austin Matthews, 91, 23 years of age. William Nylander, 25. Taylor Hall, 29, and that's a veteran at 29. I mean, you still got like four years with him, no problem. Mitch Marner, 24. Connor Carrick, 27. Kaspari Kapanen, 24. Jake Gardner. Then you get down to the guys who, like I said, we need to trade away. Jake Gardner, 30. JVR, 32. Cody Eakin. He might be somebody that we trade away as well. Free up that third line uh, center role, even though he's pretty solid down there. Uh, uh, Cody Eakin, 30. Vili Polka, 27. Frederick Gucci, 26, right? So this team is still very young. We've seen a lot of su uh, success very early. So the center core, Austin Matthews, Cody Eakin. Yeah, see, we have Mitch Marner or William Nylander that can play second line center. Then that goes Cody Eakin to the third line and Frederick Gucci to the fourth line. But next year, we could always just try out Austin Matthews, Cody Eakin, and uh, Frederick Gucci as one, two, and three. Timo Shev and Sprong then come up to the second line with Cody Eakin. And then the first line is Austin Matthews, William Nylander, and Mitch Marner. You trade away Taylor Hall and James Van Riemsdyk and fill out the rest of the squad that way. Get some draft picks. Retool for the future, right? We also have all these other guys. AHL. Nah, there, we don't need them. Uh, Olin, Gatte, Gucci. Yep, so we really don't have any prospects here in Toronto. I mean, we've been making the playoffs in the last four years, so that kind of makes sense. But n we don't really need prospects either because our roster players are top of the league. They're great and they're young still. So this Leaf squad, I said it at the beginning of this video, they really do come in ready to go in NHL 17. They got the goaltender. They got the defensive core with the one offensive defenseman, Morgan Riley, who inevitably will become a plus 90 overall guy. They got the first line center, Austin Matthews. They got the winger playmakers, Nylander and uh, and Marner, and then they just have a ton of prospects that you can move and 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 send off somewhere else to make a trade acquisition. The Toronto Maple Leafs. Now that I've done it, one of the easier teams to do in NHL 17. All right. So the future looks bright for the blue and white. Um, that's going to be a fun live stream. We're going to do that on Thursday. I don't know what time it is just yet. Stay close to Twitter. I'll give you guys plenty of updates. I'll also upload a YouTube video when we're doing the live stream so you guys can jump over. I'm just trying to rem I'm just trying to think. Is there anything else that we haven't seen? We've gone through basically everything. So there it is, boys. The five-year run with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Did a good job. I made the my, my hometown Leafs a dynasty. Steve, baby. Will it happen in real life? More than likely not. It certainly won't happen that fast. The future does look bright for the blue and white, but I don't know, man. Three Stanley Cups in the next five years? I I'd take it. I'd certainly take it. But now we have to ask the question, where does GM Superb Man go next? With the Toronto Maple Leafs, we had a team that started off as a rebuild, but, you know, quickly grew to a contender. They already had the prospects in place. How about a team that is clearly not a playoff team, but maybe doesn't have the pros uh, prospects in place, like the Colorado Avalanche, for example? Yeah, they have a few good players, like Matt Duchesne, Gabriel Landeskog, Nathan McKinnon, Tyson Berry is back there. Uh, Simeon Varlamov ain't bad, but they always simulate horribly, and they don't have upcoming prospects that's going to make their team that much better. So, do you trade away a Matt Duchesne? Do you trade away a Gabriel Landeskog, a Nathan McKinnon to reset a little bit? That could be an interesting team. 
team. Or how about the New York Islanders, a team that you kind of expect to be better than where they are. John Tavares, Andrew Ladd, right? But they just they can't seem to get over that hump. So if you're going to that team, what do you do? Do you trade away John Tavares and start the rebuild? Or do you quickly try to bring in some assets to prove to him before he comes before he becomes a UFA that the Islanders can get it done? And that one could be interesting. Or do we go back to Vancouver? Couldn't get him a Stanley Cup the first time I went around. They still have the damn Sedin twins. Maybe it's time I go back there and trade them away and try to win my first Stanley Cup as a member of the Vancouver Canucks. Boys, I'm going to leave it to you. I'm going to read the comments. I want to know what you guys are thinking. We're going to do the live stream GM mode to finish off the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'll upload it to YouTube afterwards. We're going to do that on Thursday. And then maybe this weekend or sometime next week, we're going to start up our second GM mode for NHL 17. All right, boys. So I will see you there. And for all the fans of Toronto, thank you very much for allowing me to be the GM of your team over the last five years. I had a, I had a great time. We brought a championship to your city. So you know what, boys? Thank you very much. And I will see you in the future. Be sure to check out our website, 2bcsports.com, where the hockey talk continues. Find myself and others in the live interactive chat or dive into the active forums to talk about sports and gaming. You can also find us on Twitch where the live streams come to life. Rocko!